Hi, I'm Abby, the content producer at Chili in the Buttons, and today I'm going to share with you some of my recent makes and my upcoming sewing plans. So the first garment I've got to show you is a pattern that was relaunched at the end of last year, and it is the iconic Clio Pinafore. So I've made this gorgeous aubergine colour uh, needle cord version of Clio. You may have seen it in the corduroy sewing tips video that I did. Um, really lovely, luxurious, lush colour. Um, Clio is perfect in needle cord. It's really great for this time of year, autumn, winter. Um, and I've really been enjoying wearing that. I live in pinafores. Um, I wear olive all the time. I've got another one to show you here. They're just such a useful layering piece to have in your wardrobe. Um, and I also love this pinafore with this Marni that I'm wearing, but more about that later. So it's not my first time making Clio. Way back in the day, I had my own sewing blog and YouTube channel, and I made Clio as one of the first things, one of the first sewing projects I ever made, one of the first Tilly and the Button sewing patterns I ever tried. Um, I made it twice and once with a button up hack as well. I'll see if I can dig out any old photos for you. Um, but otherwise it was really nice to revisit this pattern um, and I think I love this one the most out of any of the others I've made. Um, yeah, just love Cleo and it's great for beginners. So as I said, I love a pinafore. I get a lot of wear out of them and I've got a black olive pinafore. Uh, the pattern is in the book Make It Simple. And I've worn that one to death, um, <laughs> still great, it's on constant rotation in my wardrobe. But there was another sewing pattern that had caught my eye and I thought would be a really good alternative to Olive when I've worn that four days in a week already. Um, so I made Bobby. Now Bobby is another one of our classic pinafore patterns, but this time it's got a button up and it's got a defined waistband. You can also make Bobby as a skirt as well. And I've gone for the classic pinafore there with the deep, pockets. A black bobby pinafore has been on my sewing list for months and months and months as when the pattern came out a couple of years ago. I knew I just wanted to play in black one and I never got around to making it and since I wore olive so much um, I just thought you know what now's the time to make bobby. I've made mine out of a really nice twill fabric so it holds its shape but it's not too stiff and it's not too heavy. Really nice to sew with and I've gone for the classic silver pop of buttons there, really easy to use and I've lined it with a gingham cotton that I had in my stash and much like Clio this is something that is great for layering all year round. I love this with tights and boots layered over my long sleeve Tabitha t-shirts. Again it's another favourite with this Marnie blouse. It's just a really useful thing to have and I get loads of wear out of it and I'm annoyed at myself I hadn't got around to making it sooner but I'm glad it's in my wardrobe now. So when I came around to gathering makes for this video I knew I'd been sewing quite a lot, I knew I was going to have a few things to share with you, but I thought it might be more diverse than it is, but I'm afraid to tell you that the rest of the things I have to show you in this video, which is no shortage of garments, is just all Marnie's. So Marnie is the latest Tilly in the Button sewing pattern, and I didn't think that there was going to be a sewing pattern that knocked my beloved Martha dress off the top of my favourites list. But Marnie came along and I well and truly fell hell head over heels for Marnie. I just love it. So this is the Marnie blouse that I'm wearing. And you'll see I have got the shoulder ruffle option. I've gone for the plain neck and I've not gone for any of the tuck detail. And I've cut my fabric on the bias here. Much like the gingham version we did for one of our samples. And I just love it. I got this fabric from Fabric Godmother at the Knitting and Stitching show last year. It's a really nice brushed cotton. It's the perfect weight for Marnie. It just holds its shape really nicely, but it's not too heavy, it's not too stiff, and it's really lovely and soft and just lovely to wear. So I think out of all the Marnies I've made, which is a few, <laughs> this one's probably my favourite, and this one on my mannequin here is my close, my close second. It was my favourite before I made this. This fabric is also from Fabric Godmother that I got at the show and it's a viscose crepe and it's just the most beautiful weight fabric. The colour palette is stunning, it's just everything I want in a fabric. <laughs> um, for this one I've done the little ruffle collar and I've not done the shoulder ruffles and I've left off the tucks so I've just gone for the frilly collar on that one. So I love a high collar, I love a ruffle collar and I just love a mini dress, so obviously Marnie was always going to be for me. So I also have a very similar one to that dress there. And it's this 
dress version here. So on this one I did go for the shoulder ruffles, although in hindsight the, the viscose crepe doesn't hold the shape as well, so that's why I kind of left them off on later versions, on lighter weight fabrics, and just stuck to the cotton version, because I like how it holds its shape. Um, again I went for the frill neck because I love it and I haven't done the tucks. So this is another mini dress version but I've been thinking recently that I'd really like to wear this as a blouse. So I'm kind of tempted to chop off the dress length and make it a blouse because I think I might get more wear out of it because I prefer this one as a dress. So um, that's something I'm pondering at the moment. The other ones I've got to show you are blouses. So this is the first Marnie I made. It's a floral cotton poplin that I got in store in my local Abacan. Again, I've gone for the shoulder ruffles. Sorry, I could have done with an iron. <laughs> um, and I've gone for the ruffle collar. Again, it really holds that nice blousy shape that I love so much. Um, it works well, just loose over your jeans or a skirt, but I do also really like it tucked in. And then after having made the viscose dress versions and cotton poplin top versions, I wanted to try a viscose blouse version. And I love a bit of leopard print. And I've had this fabric in my stash for forever. Um, I'm not 100% sure where this fabric came from. Um, I've had it a while, but this one I've just made the simplest version of Marnie you can make. <laughs> um, so I've left off the neck ruffle, I've left off the shoulder ruffles, it's got no tucks and it's got that lovely sleeve. So it really is just the simplest version of Marnie you can make. But I did do a little hack on this one as an experiment. So on the back of my Marnie blouse, where you have that opening and you'd normally have a button, I extended my bias binding just by eye. I just added on um, a few inches and I've made it into a tie neck instead. So I think that's a really nice, easy detail. I hope you can see that there. Um, and just a little something extra for Marnie, and I think it works really nicely when you're leaving off all the other trimmings. So those were my recent makes. A lot more Marnies than I realised. I think maybe I'll shelf that pattern for now anyway. Um, and next I'll show you some of my sewing plans. So as it's January, it's currently freezing cold in the UK, and I'm on a bit of a pyjama sewing kick. So I have recently made the Juno pyjamas from Make It Simple. They're in the wash, so I can't show you them today, but I have made that pattern four times now, and that's my go-to pyjama pattern. But I wanted some loungewear, not pyjamas. And then I found this fabric that I'd been eyeing up for months and months, and I came across it at the Knitting and Stitching Show in person from Pigeon Wishes. And it's just the most gorgeous sweatshirt fabric with hands and glittery nail varnish. I mean, I couldn't resist. And it's also fleecy backed so it's going to be the most comfortable thing to wear in the world. So I've got this fabric and I thought instantly the Stella joggers. So I'm hoping I've got enough fabric here to make the hoodie and joggers. Um, I'm not 100% sure I might have to do some kind of stealthy pattern layouts or omit the pocket. I'm not too sure yet but that's what I would love to make out of this fabric and it's something that I would want right now. <laughs> So I've got a bit of a theme when it comes to cosy makes. Looking at the pile I've got next to me, I've actually just picked up a bunch of cosy fabrics, but it's January, so that's the vibe. So next up is a, another Tilly and the Buttons classic, and I've got plans for another cocoa. So I made a plain black cocoa at the end of last year. I should have showed you, I'm sorry I didn't bring that with me. <laughs> um, just the simple black funnel neck cocoa just a great basic and then I dug out this fabric from my stash um, and I had a cocoa dress in a very similar fabric a few years ago and I wore it to death. Um, it's been <laughs> worn and washed so many times I could kind of do with a new version um, and this fabric is very similar to the Ponte Roma version I had but it's a bit thinner than a Ponte Roma but it's still quite a weighty jersey. So I think I got this one from Hey So Sister a few months ago and I'm going to make the classic cocoa dress with the funnel neck so it's got that really cool 60s vibe that I love so much. So the last thing I have to show you is a pearl cardigan. Pearl came out this time last year. I've made two already. I made a floral one and a black one and then I picked up this beautiful fabric from Hey So Sister 
last year. I had my eye on it for a while. I think it came in a couple of different colours too. Um, and I just thought that's going to be perfect for pearl. So I get so much wear out of my pearl cardigans. I love wearing them with my high waist jeans. It's just such a easy outfit. And I really love the style. I think it suits me. Just love it. So I think this fabric is perfect for pearl. And um, because it's jersey with a little bit of weight to it, I think it will really hold its shape nicely when it comes to that balloon sleeve. So I'm gonna go for the balloon sleeve. So those are the sewing plans that I can tell you about, but there are a couple of things coming up soon. And I've got a lot of sewing plans for them. A lot of the fabric I've had in my stash um, that I've been storing for a while and saving for something special. This pattern is the one and um, I would love to tell you more about it, but I'm not going to. You'll just have to stay tuned for that one. So thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed having a look at my recent makes and my sewing plans. Can you beat the amount of Marnies I've made so far? Um, if you've got any suggestions for my fabric or you want to tell me what you'd make with them, let me know in the comments below. And we love hearing about your sewing plans. So if you're making something and you want to share it with us, tell us all about it in the comments. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.